Uh, a little bit about Solana as a national systems integrator. We have uh, a number of offices throughout the United States, and Hartford is our headquarters. We have an office in New York, Boston, Tampa, uh, Washington, D.C., and South California. We are a gold partner with Microsoft. Uh, we have numerous clients r r around the uh, United States in various different areas. So uh, Talon not only does SharePoint, but also we have practices that specialize in mobile development, user experience, e-commerce, business intelligence, and application integration with BizDoc and Windows Azure. So now that we have that out of the way, let's uh, start with the series itself. I just wanted to uh, thank you all for taking the time to attend today's webinar around social enterprise search and findability. Uh, our objective for this SharePoint strategy series is twofold. Uh, firstly, outline a specific process that you can follow to design an enterprise intranet portal with productivity, collaboration, findability at its core. And secondly, share with you tools and techniques that we have found useful through our engagements with other customers and clients that you can use to implement um, enterprise portals through SharePoint. I uh, just wanted to kind of lay down uh, the platform that we're going to use for this webinar series. We're going to do most of our demos in um, SharePoint Office 365, and we're going to have some SharePoint apps that are going to be hosted through Windows Azure. So we'll, we're going to mix it up a little bit with on-prem and on-cloud solutions and show you the gamut of um, custom applications that you can develop on SharePoint and the out-of-the-box capabilities that both SharePoint on-prem and SharePoint online offer. So we're all familiar with you know, social tools. In the consumer space, social has been growing at an unprecedented pace over the past few years and has really rewired the way we communicate in our personal lives and businesses. And businesses are no different. They have actually started adopting social in the enterprise, and they're actually seeing it change the way people get things done at work. When you come to think about it, this is very similar in a lot of ways to the way other communication tools have evolved, starting in the consumer world and then entering the enterprise, completely redefining the way we work together. So social is not something new to us. It's just something different when we think about it in the workplace. And we'll talk about how you can actually introduce social in your organization and what the benefit of introducing that tool set can be to your organization. So just uh, stepping back a little bit and looking at all the communication tools that we use today in the enterprise, you know, we started off with a phone, of course, moved on to email and IM, voice and video, what we're doing today, right now, and, and then it's the social networking aspect of it, right? It's the next new thing. So why should you jump on the bandwagon? So let me say the basic premise of social technologies is around open conversations and personal connections. So the phone, for instance, you know, opened up a lot of personal connections with people who were not living with us, right? Who we were living, it was between family and friends. You could connect better. Email and IM kind of revolutionized that whole concept of creating those personal connections. But the problem I think a lot of organizations face today is with email is that there's just too much of it. Remember the time you went for a week vacation, came back, and saw your inbox flooded with like 500 emails or 1,000 emails on the lower end, I mean, and trying to sift through all that is rather onerous. So the idea behind social networking is, is not to eliminate email or IM, but it's actually to augment those technologies, right? So you still have email, you still have IM, but you use them a little less than tools like you know, Yammer or SharePoint. But the bottom line is that, say I'm working on a project, right? I have about 15 people on my team working on a project, and they're all communicating through email. A lot of that communication, almost 80%, I would argue, is not related directly to me. It's related to people talking with each other or communicating with each other, but they feel obligated to include the whole team in that email communication. So now I have to actually open that email, look at it, and figure out whether that email is really needed. Do I need to act on that email or not? What social networking provides you is another way to capture all of that communication 
give you a digest, maybe weekly, of what's going on uh, in terms of communication in your team. And then for those important things that you really need to know how your clients are doing or how your customers are doing or how your users are doing, you use email to target that message to the people that you need to target. So you use email selectively, just like you would do phone, right? We use email all the time, and phone is used for those special calls that we need to make to, to make that personal connection. So those tools don't go away. They are still there, and social networking just augments the way we work in the organization. And it's here to stay. And tomorrow, it's going to be something else. So the idea is to evolve as the technologies are evolving and stay with the times. Say you, you do buy into the whole concepts of enterprise social and you try to implement it. Where do you start? And what is a good strategy? So you do have to have a good strategy in terms of how you roll out this technology because, you know, as we've seen in the consumer world, it can lead to a lot of trouble sometimes. People put things out there that they shouldn't be putting and things like that. So the driving forces to social networking should be around making those personal connections and enabling collaboration and innovation in your organization. So the first pillar to a successful rollout of social technology is recognizing people. So we've all heard of the term engaged employees. So we know that engaged employees are enthusiastic about their work. They're fully involved in the way an organization works. And they act in a way that furthers the goals of the organization. In short, they're doing everything they can to help make companies successful. And when people are going about and beyond to, to make that happen, and the reason that they, they do that, one side is the money aspect of it, but, the, but a bigger part is just peer recognition, which is very important. So have that as a core pillar of your enterprise social rollout. How would you go about recognizing people for their contributions, uh, whether it be blogs, whether it be new articles that they're posting, uh, whether it be content that they're creating as part of their job. Recognition is important, and social tools kind of provide a very easy way to recognize people very quickly. So, for instance, one of our clients set up competitions between the various teams in their organization. So they had a competition set up for blogging and creation of articles. And the articles and blogs that got the most likes and hits, they actually had quote unquote featured articles for the month in the home page and they listed those articles in the featured home page. And people actually what they saw was very quickly people started realizing that to get noticed for their departments or teams or groups to get noticed in the organization, they had to contribute to a new ideas, either either come up with new ideas, better articles, create better content and, and so on and so forth. So the people not only became involved, but they became more productive. The quality of work that started coming out of people was much higher than prior to the social tool rollout. Another actually example we'll look at is the concept of badges. So, you know, giving badges like expert or you must have actually seen come across those in, you know, user group forums, for instance. The more people respond to queries on a user group, the higher their rating. And you can do something similar in your organization as well. Um, so let collaboration guide users. Instead of doing a lot of top-down governance, l give some freedom to your employees. Empower them, as we, as we say. So unless you do that, uh, you can't really foster that culture of innovation in your organization. So if you want to be the next Fortune 500 or the next company that's in the leading edge, the only thing that will get you there are your employees in your organization. So definitely another core pillar of your social rollout should be to empower your organizations and let the tools and culture actually guide the users in how they end up using these tools. So there are many ways to kind of do the same thing and, and you will see very quickly a pattern emerging in your, in your organization of how people kind of work together and what tools they like and so on and so forth. So rather than trying to impose the rules and controls, that let the users and the collaboration tool guide that usage. Um, it's easier said than done in certain organizations, but um, there has to be a good kind of middle ground between top-down and bottom-up governance. So for instance, 
had one of our clients, we did just that. So we created site templates for the collaboration sites, right? So the organization as a whole decided, this is the way we want to lay out our social sites. A news feed, a control on the left, for instance, shared documents on the right, some badges, and so on and so forth. But that, that template was laid out by the communications department, and they rolled it out to the rest of the organization. But from then on forward, what content went in, how people actually liked stuff, what went into the whole social collaboration communication aspect was left to the groups and teams, and different teams and groups did things a little bit differently. And that's okay, as long as you have those controls in place where you, know, you can remove posts that are offensive have a written policy of what is acceptable in these in these social groups and what is not. And then the last one is, of course, mobile. And, uh, you know, this is just not a buzzword, but this is actually a reality of today's workplace. We're all connected 24-7 for good or bad. If you're going to come up with a whole different paradigm for your organization in terms of how people are going to communicate, you have to take those tools and make them available in mobile. We are fortunate, I guess, from a SharePoint perspective that, you know, Microsoft thought about that as well. And, the, and SharePoint 2013 is much more compatible with most of the mobile devices out there. So you can actually have your social sites running on the browsers in iOS devices or Android devices. So let's look at the demo. And I wanted to kind of go through some key features of 2013 in terms of collaboration. So what I'm going to do is start off at the My Site page. Basically, this is a profile page of myself here, but this would be a profile page of your employee. And this is where actually social starts, not really ends. Most of the times, you know, through the rollout that I've seen for SharePoint, My Site is always a stepchild of SharePoint. It's an afterthought in terms of rolling out my sites. If you want social and collaboration integrated into your SharePoint environment, I think this should be a core piece of your rollout as to how people use it, what are the features available now in my sites, and, and what is the profile page all about. But the first thing, of course, is when somebody clicks on a name and comes to their profile page, they're going to see the About Me page, which is a combination of social activities that that person is involved in, as well as some personal information that they want to share with the organization. So for instance, in my profile, I have some keywords here that I want to let others know that this, these are some things that I'm interested in and I know a little bit about. So things like WCM, which is web content management, enterprise content management, software development, and so on and so forth. So these are keywords or terms that I've attached to my profile. And we'll see in a little bit how all this comes together to create a more connected, unified experience. The other aspect is the activity feed that you see down below, where you can see conversations I'm having with, uh, say, for instance, Michael. And we're talking about the new practice wiki site that was published and so on and so forth. Say I uploaded a PowerPoint presentation, and I wanted to share it with Mike. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my home page. There it is. And what I want to do is I uploaded this Agile PowerPoint slide deck to this. So I'm going to copy this URL, and I'm going to come back to my conversation with Mike, I'm going to say, check out a to deliver projects on time. Don't we all want to do that? And then I can come in here, and instead of showing the URL, really, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to just a word and say display as here and click post. So what I've done now is I'm not only having conversations with others in the company, but I'm also posting content right in the conversations. So it becomes a little bit more than just Facebook. It is for the enterprise. So content is king, right? And if you can't relate the two, the personal communications, and the content together, 
then this tool is not really usable. So what I wanted to show was it's very easy to kind of take content from anywhere in your environment, in any site, and kind of create these organic conversations that you're having with others. And the good thing about it is it's in one central place, right? I could do the same thing with, say, I am. But the problem is that it's going to be saved into my Outlook folder somewhere. And now if I want to search through that, I have to go to Outlook, search through all my conversations, and so on and so forth, right? Over here, I can just come in here, look at my activities, and then just get to the activities that I want to get to. And I can also target people in my conversation. So if I wanted to include, say, Patrick in the conversation, I'd say, Patrick, I'll check my post out and check out the document I posted about. So I've targeted Patrick, and he's going to get a notification, not only in SharePoint, but also in Outlook as a digest. So you can set up a weekly digest, for instance, and because I specifically mentioned Patrick and tagged him on this conversation, he's going to get an indication in his Outlook as well as in SharePoint that there is a conversation that he was included in, for instance, right? So great tool to start kind of communicating and collaborating with people. So this is the start of your social tool rollout. The other aspect is the blogging aspect. So you can have personal blogs where people can create their own personal blogs, and then you can have an aggregated place where all these blogs are collected and published for the organization as a whole. What I wanted to show here was the ease with which you can create not only blogs that have text in them, but blogs that have images and media in them. So let me go ahead and click Create a Post. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to YouTube, for instance, and say I want to share this video with, with everybody. Uh, basically, SharePoint 2013 search, cool features in 2013. So I'm going to go to YouTube. I'm going to click on Embed. I'm going to take this iframe code right from there. And I'm going to come back here. And I'm going to put it here. And I'm going to go back, put a title. SharePoint 2013, search new features, and you know, just add a category. And you can create custom categories, definitely. And I'll just publish it immediately. So now, if somebody comes to my personal site and want to see what blogs I've written, even if you're not aggregating it to show everybody else, people can come in and see what kind of what things I'm, I'm researching, what things I'm working on, what have I to contribute to the organization. So very easily create rich media blogs and embed stuff from not only within SharePoint, but externally. So this is content that's not even in SharePoint. It's, in, it's on YouTube, right? So we looked at the personal site and the blog feature. There's also something called Newsfeed, which actually has more of the activities Instead of just showing activities, you actually see not only what activities I'm following, what conversations I'm following, but also who is mentioning me in their own feeds. So, for instance, Craig and Jay Lynn have mentioned me in a couple of posts of their own, and I can follow that. I can also look at the activity feed that was on my homepage and likes and so on and so forth. The other aspect is this whole section called trending tags. So I kind of turned down the the search feature, but this is where search comes in and integrates into collaboration. So if I've been tagging a lot in my blog or in my news feeds, this is where the trending tags. So basically what SharePoint does is it looks at all the activities and sees how are people communicating, what tags are more hot than others. So maybe there's a tag called a pound SharePoint and that will show up in the trending tags. And if it's been used multiple times by different people, then that's a trending tag that people might be interested in. So, you know, it, it brings in the social aspect of it, but also the analytic part of it in a tool set. All right, so I'm going to go back to Portal Home. I'm going to show you a couple of other features that are pretty cool in terms of social collaboration. So one is the SharePoint community site. And this is built specifically for social. and like I mentioned before, it provides you a way to recognize people. So as you can see on the right-hand side, 
I've got top contributors in this group. So you can create as many community sites as you want. And the main idea behind community sites is these organic groups of people who tend to work together. Maybe it's a project team. Maybe it's a, a team that's not really working on a project, but are working on some ideas together. You can create these community sites and people can invite other people into these community sites and work on maybe ideas, maybe some research article they're working together, maybe a presentation they're working together, maybe a strategic initiative in the organization that they're working together. Whatever it be, it provides a great way to kind of pull everybody together, keep your documents and content together, and provide recognition in terms of who are the people who are really contributing to that group. So you can create badges like expert, you know, SharePoint Rockstar, and so on and so forth. And like you can see, Jalen is our sales director, and she's in here. Patrick is a SharePoint developer. He's in here. Mike is an architect. He's in here, and I'm in here as well. So you can pretty much invite anybody you want in the organization. And you can assign badges and create badges. So it gives you that flexibility, that the, the stuff that we we're talking about in terms of the bottom-up approach to governance instead of a top-down. So the top-down approach is what goes into the site, right, in terms of where's the discussion panel, you know, what polls can people create, what content can people put in terms of what is acceptable or not. The bottom-up approach is for letting people decide what their badges are going to be, how they're going to recognize people, and who they're going to invite to the group. So that's the SharePoint community. And then the last thing is around an enterprise blog area. So SharePoint comes with a built-in not only personal blog area, but also an enterprise blog area. And what you can do here is invite your executives, invite the senior management folks to communicate with the rest of the organization about what's happening in your organization. What does the next five years look like, for example? Things like that. So they have a lot of stuff that they can talk to the employees about, and this is a great place to actually put those articles and have them actually contribute to the organization. And then kind of roll it out to the other people in the organization. And once the executives are coming here and looking at the blog, you'll see that those executives and senior management people start commenting on blogs that employees are writing. And what that does is enforce that empowerment of people. People would actually appreciate that somebody, maybe the CEO of the company, is actually reading their article and finds it interesting enough that he or she spends the time to like it or, or provide feedback on that blog article. So it builds a sense of camaraderie in the organization as well. So there are a lot of benefits to actually rolling out something like social features in your enterprise. And the last thing I wanted to show was the Team Wiki site. So this is also part of your collaboration tool set, if you will. Wiki is a great way to actually create content organically, meaning there's not a whole lot of structure going into a Wiki. People put content in there. People can edit content. And the, the content kind of evolves. And the, the coolest thing about a wiki is the ease with which you can actually put content. So for instance, I'll just give you an example because we're running low on time here. I also want to go through some search functionality. But this is a wiki site. It's very easy to kind of edit and add content. It's basically rich text editing. So I can just come in here and click edit and it'll, it'll start editing. And there is a specific syntax to create new pages, for instance. Uh, just touch base on that one. So you just put two square brackets. Uh, on either side of a topic, and SharePoint will recognize that as a potential for a page and puts these dotted lines underneath that. And if you click on it, it'll ask you, well, this page does not exist. Do you want to actually create it? And you can create a blank page. So I created two pages here, training roadmap and training plan. This is like the SharePoint practice with you. And I, I want to disseminate some information about what do our SharePoint developers need to know in terms of SharePoint. So I click on this, and I come here, and I have an image of all the topics that SharePoint does, from web apps to search to branding to web parts and so on and so forth. So I have this, this place. And if somebody feels like, okay, this is, this is a lot, I want to see how do I go about learning all this stuff. I have a link to another page that goes to, say, for instance, a Visio document with a flowchart of where somebody is and where they want to go and what is the actual path that will get them there. Right. So there are many tools available in your toolkit to actually roll out social. And the degree with which you roll out it really depends upon the culture of your organization and where you want that culture to go.
Right. So I just wanted to show you that, you know, you can pretty much add whatever you want in these wiki sites. I've added a visual document with a flow chart. And if you're a SharePoint administrator, this is your training plan. If you're a SharePoint developer, you know, you've got an alternate training plan that you can follow. And all these are clickable back to SharePoint document libraries and stuff like that. So if I click one of, one of these boxes, it'll take me back to the actual training module, the training plan, so I can start my training and so on. So let's jump back to the slide deck real quick. And what we're going to do, we're going to talk about just a couple of slides here about how to improve findability and how does search fit in into social collaboration and connectivity. So what we call connected knowledge solution, and what this really means is taking your taxonomy store and the taxonomy-driven portal, taking your collaboration tools and kind of bridging all that together through search. So if I search for a term, for instance, I might find information in folders or maybe an external line of business database. It could be documents stored in SharePoint. It could be people related to that department, for instance. Or it could be discussions and ideas that people have been talking about. It could be a hashtag, for instance, pound finance or something like that, that I want to get back. So search will return all that information to you. But the crux of creating a connected portal, a connected internet destination for your employees is to actually create the connections between all these disparate sources of information. Uh, and that's what search provides you, is creating that unified experience, right? And also provides you with a way to easily kind of navigate those search results. So how many times have you gone on Google or Bing and, and searched for something and you get 1 million, 20,000 results back? And now nobody's going to go through all those results to find exactly what they're looking for. So what you really need is a way to reduce that result set, filter out the stuff that you don't need, and in such a way that those filters actually relate back to what you know about your work, about your business. And that's really what is called faceted search. It's the facets of your organization, the terms that you use on a daily basis that are available to you on the search screen so you can filter very quickly and easily. You understand what those filters mean, and it's not a SharePoint term like, SB site or SB content type, and so on and so forth. I'm not going to go through this site, but this is just a building blocks for search. What I wanted to uh, touch base on before the demo is the findability solution that, like I said, the Talon Accelerator solution. So what we found over the years was our clients were able to take advantage of the information architecture, the taxonomy we developed, right? We also made search better for them. But what happened is four or five months down the line, the users went back to the way they were working with content. Some people tagged content, some people did not tag content. So the idea of having a curator to tag content and aggregate content and be able to provide that very easily to users is core to actually improving findability of your content. So content management, you know, a lot of times we stop at, oh, this is the way you store content in this system. That's where we stop. That's actually the beginning of content management. Content management actually involves not only storing of that content, but be able to retrieve that content easily and fast. So let's look at some of the features that are available in 2013 in terms of search. And we also will look at one of our findability solution accelerators and the idea of buying that solution. So let me go back to my demo VM here. And I'm going to go directly to search. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just search for SharePoint because, you know, everything in my portal is SharePoint. But essentially, this is what you get, right? So you have a search screen. Like I said, the filters are on the left-hand side. And you want to create filters that actually make sense to your organization. And faceted search means that those search terms are extracted from your content and put in the filter. So these filters, some of them can be automatically generated. And they are dynamic. So you won't see something like ECM here under tags if that term does not exist in the result set. So it says three, and it also gives you a count, which is, which is great, because then you can actually filter out the content. So for instance, I added something here, which I think is, is pretty cool. If you had a farm that had hundreds of site collections, and people worked across sites and checked out files in different libraries, wouldn't it be nice to provide a way for people to get to all their checked out files in one interface? And that's really what I have here is 
I've checked out files pretending to be two different people here. But essentially, I search on SharePoint. It also tells me, do you want to filter on files that are checked out to say, for instance, JLAN? So I click on that, and I get directly to that document that's actually checked out by JLAN, right? Or I could say, you know, checked out by administrator, and this is a PowerPoint presentation that's checked out by another user. So very, very easy, and you can you can really extend this to create like a home page for users with checked out files, my checked out files. So this can be very easily translated with no code solutions, really. This is not a coded solution. This is right out of the box, but with a little bit of configuration. You can create a solution for checked out files, most recently modified files, files that they're following, for instance, things like that. So when people go onto their portal, they get to their content right away, and they don't have to go figure out which library that checked out file belong to. So going back to the search, the other features that are available, of course, you will hear about is the combined everything vertical. So this is called a search vertical, and basically what that everything means is that right here you'll see everything in terms of content, conversations, video files, media files, and so on and so forth. But you can also create specific verticals. So for instance, I could I could go back to my home page, for instance. So let me let me just go back to my home portal home page. And I could create a search box that just looks for people, right? And I could come in here and type in Craig, enter. And it takes me right to the people vertical for Craig. So it, it actually, you can create an employee directly very easily by doing something like that. So you can, you can create these verticals very easily by doing pretty much no code. You, you don't have to really add code to add verticals. So I also have a vertical for videos, for instance. And you'll notice one thing is that videos are being displayed differently than when I go to the Everything tab, right? So you can control how things are displayed by changing the display templates, so to speak. So that's kind of SharePoint speak to, to describe how things are rendered on the page. So if you had other media files, for instance, maybe engineering drawings, for instance, and you wanted to show them differently, you can do that as well. So you can add a vertical for engineering drawings. You can add a vertical for events, you know, my next events, and so on and so forth. The other thing that I wanted to show before ending this demo is I actually added very quickly a list with some some links. And if you hover over that, you know, down below, I don't know if you can see it, but it's a URL to the search center. So if, if say I wanted to, just to show you the verticals you can create, say I wanted to create a vertical for all PowerPoint slides in my form. I click over here, and what you'll see in the results set is all the PowerPoint slides in my farm. What I did was there's a keyword called file extension. And I could put my file extension called CPTX and I get all my PowerPoint decks back. I could also do something like docx where Word documents and, and get only the document files. Now I'm not saying that your business users need to understand this keyword syntax, but what I really mean is that you can very easily take those URLs and create verticals in your search center to create a customized experience for your users. So they can just click on one thing and get all the video files, for instance. They can click on people to get, you know, all the people, for instance. So we're at five minutes. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop my presentation here. Hopefully, you know, there, there's a lot of stuff to show in SharePoint, as you can see, and I can, you know, I could go on for for another couple of hours just talking about search functionality in SharePoint, but hopefully, you know, you've gotten a good overview of the new features in 2013 and how you can create some really good user experiences for your end users. I'm going to switch over to the slide deck here, and uh, just a reminder to everyone, the next webinar is going to be January 23rd. We're going to talk about BI and integrating external applications and so on. It's going to be really exciting. There's, there's a lot of custom development in that webinar to integrate actually SharePoint with external systems. So in case you, you're interested in taking your portal to the next level, that would be a good webinar to attend. I'll now thank you very much for attending and I'll open up with Q&A. I'm gonna switch it over to Nicole. Thank you, Reddy. We will be unmuting all lines if you have a question for today's presenter. What are, what are some of the strategies you've used uh, with 
previous clients to help increase uh, long-term user adoption? So a great question, and it kind of is a good segue into the findability solution I wanted to show. So a couple of things we talked about trying to recognize people. So a strategy around letting people know that they're appreciated for the content that they're generating and the collaboration, the communication that they're having with other people. So having around badges and, and maybe creating some competition in your organization or having some fun competition, really. And the other thing is around the concept of taking your information architecture, search engine, and providing an easier interface for people to create and manage content. So this is our findability solution. What I have up top are what we call as exhibits. And they're not just collection of documents, they're collection of documents, whether they're from SharePoint or from outside of SharePoint, the links, whether they're in the web, in SharePoint or external to SharePoint. So wherever your content resides, you can actually collect and put that content in these exhibits. The topic of the exhibit actually drives the exhibit itself, but the idea is to get these collection of documents together and put them in one place, tag them all together so you don't have to individually tag each and every single document. But essentially, you have to think not only in terms of the social aspects of it, but also, you know, how do people work with content? So. Thinking through all those different aspects is really the way to kind of increase long-term user adoption. And you have to be at it. It's not a fire and forget philosophy. You have to kind of roll out your, your portal in phases, if you will, and then keep a feedback loop, so to speak, right, so that you can improve on what you have released. Because over time, things change. They have, you know, how people work with each other changes, how people interact with content changes, and so on. So you have to keep your keep your portal organic and, and ever evolving. Kind of along those same lines with strategies for rollout, you had mentioned creating a blog and starting with the management. Would you say that you'd like to spill information there before you roll it out to the rest of the company? Yeah, great question. And I would definitely roll out in phases because it's a big culture shift for most organizations when you start talking about blogs or, or even any of the social features, right? So. What we have usually done with organizations is kind of identify those groups of evangelists in the organization that are tech savvy or maybe, you know, take on to new technologies pretty fast and create those groups, have them kind of drive the content initially, whether it be your executive management level or maybe even department managers, for instance, or even certain employees that are really good at creating content, authoring content, and are excited about doing that. So create that group, roll it out first with that group, evaluate how people are interacting and, and responding to that. And then you kind of create a strategy, roll it out to have a broader rollout to the rest of your organization. If there aren't any more questions today, and if you have a question later on, please feel free to email us at talon.com. And as a reminder, the webinar recording will be added to talon.com in the coming weeks for an on-demand viewing. We hope that you found today's webinar informative and helpful, and we thank you for attending. Have a great day.